good Sunday morning to everyone. I would like to show you some features of the Casio FX115EX that I've only found out recently that will really help us with our statistics problems. Basically it has a bunch of distributions already built into it and we're going to go through that today. Now here's a typical binomial problem. Flip a coin five times, there's a 60% chance the, point the coin will come up heads, <clears throat> Excuse me, what is the probability you will get three heads out of the five, five coin flips? This is the problem, let's boil down to its numbers. N is 5, probability of success is 0. 0.6, probability of failure is 0. 0.4, and you're looking for three successes. This formula here is how you say it, how we've been saying it in the math class. This is the binomial coefficient of the number of ways to pick three things out of five multiplied by 0.6 to the third power, 0.4 to the second power. You could just write that uh, directly. You could just say five and then hit shift e uh, division sign and you get, whoops, excuse me, I forgot to say five and then shift division sign and then 3, and that's your binomial coefficient, and that's all you have to do with that. Multiply, and let's multiply by 0. 0.6 to the third power. Hit your right arrow key to come down, hit multiply again, and hit 0. 0.4 to the second power. Hit equal hit decimal, 3.456 is the right answer. That's a no must, no fuss way of doing it. You didn't have to write down any intermediate results. You just use the formula just as it is, right? Let me show you a second way to do this. If you hit mode and you hit re uh, the down arrow, they got all the distributions already built in for you here. Let's hit um, binomial, which is 4. Let's list the variables. We want x to be 3. You want n to be 5. And when you want your probability of success to be 0. 0.6. And there you get the same number. That is a very easy way to do your binomial problems. You can do them right off the calculator. Can we also, in addition to binomial problems, do standard normal problems. Well, let's try one. I would like to know the area under the curve that's to the left of 1.645. Normally you'd get out your table 2 for this, right? But if you hit mode, down arrow key, distributions, you'd have two normals. Normal probability distribution, normal cumulative distribution. The number 2 is the one we want here. Your lower well, your lower is really negative infinity. To say negative infinity, why don't we just say negative 9999. Nine, nine, nine. That's good enough. So you're getting all the area to the left here. And your upper limit is 1.645. We want our mean, our standard deviation to be 1, our mean to be 0, because we're dealing with the standard normal. So 95% of the uh, area is from here on. And we're going all the way basic, basically to negative infinity. Let's try another problem. This time I want the area between two points. Between negative 1.96 and 1.96. Let's say I just want the area in here. Okay. Well, let's try that again. You just hit the, yeah, just hit on and it, it just resets. That's nice. Your lower limit this time is a negative 1.96. Your upper limit is 1.96. Your mean is still, uh, your standard deviation is still 1, your mean is still 0. Oh, so that's 95. Now we're getting rid of both the tails and just this area right under the, the hill here. And that's 95% of the curve. That's interesting. 
But as you can probably guess, you know, with a little bit of work, you realize you don't need your table 2 anymore. Uh, let's try an actual word problem. The mean distance for a tee shot on the 1999 Men's PGA Tour is 272.2 yards, with a standard deviation of 8.12. Why do we find the percentage between 260 and 280 yards? If you remember how we did this in class, you had to write two graphs, the normal curve for this problem and the standard normal curve, and you had to normalize your numbers between them. Guess what? We don't have to do that anymore. Why don't we just put in a lower bound of 260, an upper bound of 280, now, for our standard deviation, put in this number, 8.12. Our mean is 272.2. And you automatically get your answer. By the way, this is a problem right out of the, the book in Chapter 6. That's not the answer in the back of the book. Why? Because they're getting in theirs off of Table 2, and they only can carry two decimal places on their z-scores. This one doesn't have that limit. This is actually a much more accurate number. So this is a great way to do uh, normal problems in, um, in statistics if you happen to have went out and bought this calculator for 18 bucks. Okay? All right, I hope that helps you, and I'll see you in class.